We're joined now by Bob Kitchen, Vice President for Emergencies and Humanitarian Action at the International Rescue Committee. Bob, thank you so much for speaking with us. As we heard in Matt's report, it's now projected northern Gaza will face famine in the coming months. We've been hearing about extreme hunger and food shortages in Gaza for quite some time now, but famine is very specific and a very serious designation for those that may not be aware of the gravity surrounding that word famine. Explain to us what this means exactly. The fact that the, the world's authority has said that famine is imminent in northern Gaza is, is, is terrible. Um, what it means is that people are not just skipping food, skipping meals. They're now facing real health concerns. They're facing death unless the food situation changes and changes very rapidly. And Bob, I can't imagine a region being able to recover quickly after experiencing famine. When a population experiences famine like this, how does that impact their long-term prospects for economic and social recovery? It will take years and billions of dollars and real time for people to recover, to get back to their homes, to rebuild their homes, to rebuild hospitals, schools. It is catastrophic, the humanitarian situation on the ground. And there's no end in sight. We, we have to get to a ceasefire immediately or we'll start seeing greater numbers of people dying from hunger and associated illness than we, we are seeing now because of the violence. So, so difficult. And, and Bob, I want to ask you about this report, a UN report that was just released today, which projected famine in northern Gaza by May. How does this relate to what IRC workers are seeing in Gaza right now? Well, the report predicts imminent famine for the north and says there's a very high risk of famine in the central area of Gaza, with a slightly lower chance of famine in the, the southern part, where the bulk of the population is displaced to around Rafa. IRC and our partners are working across Gaza, but our emergency medical team is in the central area where there's very high risk of uh, famine. It is very difficult to deliver aid at the moment. The constraints upon the importation of aid by the Israelis is strangling the aid flow, and we can see the consequences of that in these food security, these hunger figures right in front of us now. And Bob, we're, we're looking at the images right now, the images of destruction and despair. Uh, with this scope of destruction, even if a ceasefire were reached in the near term, how long will it take for Gaza to recover? Well, it all depends on what comes with a ceasefire. The ceasefire speaks to the cessation of hostility, so no more intense fighting. The other thing that has to change and has to change immediately is the flow of humanitarian aid, food at a huge scale to try and help communities catch back up on the food that they've missed, to try and help them stabilise in their health. Um, so the, the stopping of fighting is, is urgent, it's needed, but it has to come with a massive increase in humanitarian assistance that can freely move across borders all the way around the Gaza Strip if we're going to make a difference in the catastrophic humanitarian need we're seeing on the ground right now. And finally, Bob, I want to ask you about that phone call between President Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today. Israel's stated intention to invade Rafah was the major focus of that call. We know that President Biden has warned against an invasion of Rafah. What would be the impact of a major military ground operation in Rafah? Well, there's more than a million people in Rafah at the moment who have fled from other parts of Gaza to find safety. Rafah itself is not safe right now. But... There's nowhere else for them to go, for them to go to safety. So uh, a military offensive in Rafa now would result in the loss of life in the tens of thousands, we predict. Many people would lose their life because they wouldn't be able to get to another place that's safe. So I'm glad that President Biden and Prime Minister Nenya, who spoke today, I hope the message got through that moving forward with this offensive is terrible. Uh, and that we should instead direct our attention to an immediate ceasefire. Bob Kitchen, thank you so much for your time and for your insights. Bob Kitchen with the International Rescue Committee.